Alright, so before you go to create a Mine 3 memory stick, you need to install a program called StickZap onto your Sony Clie. Now there's actually two ways to go about doing this. One of them involves using the USB port on the charging dongle and connecting it to your computer and using a program called HotSync, but that involves installing drivers and a little bit of messing around. I think it's a lot easier to just put StickZap directly onto a memory stick and then load it into the Clie from there. So that's the method I'll be showing in this video, but I can definitely go over HotSync in a future video if that's something that you're interested in. This is the Clie that I'll be using for this video. I believe it's the most similar one I own to the one that you purchased. I have gone ahead and reset it to factory settings, so this should be pretty much what yours will look like when you turn it on for the first time. The screen you see on your Clie when you plug it in for the first time should look pretty similar to this. Some of them will have a little next button that you have to click and go through a few settings before you can get to the home menu. Most of them don't, and you can just click home. Now from there, you can go ahead and take your stick that you bought and plug it into the memory stick reader and after a few moments it'll come up. Some of them automatically load into this screen which would show the contents of the card if there were anything on it. Uh, you can go ahead and click home to leave that and then you'll want to click on an icon called card info. From there you can go ahead and click this little drop down menu and then click format card. Click OK and you don't have to rename the card now it's a lot easier to rename it from a computer and it takes a few moments to format but it shouldn't take more than a minute or two and once it's done you can click home and go ahead and take the card back out the next step is to take your stick and plug it into the stick reader and then wait for it to come up in windows and then what you want to do is double click on the palm folder double click on launcher and then you want to take the stick zap file and drag it into the launcher folder. Once that's done copying, you can go ahead and click on safely eject and remove the stick from the reader. The next step is to go ahead and put the stick in your Clie. And once it comes up, you can go ahead and hit the home menu button. And then what you want to do now is click the drop down button and go to copy. And what you're going to do is at the top, instead of copying to the card, you want to click copy to the handheld. And then you'll go ahead and highlight stick zap and click copy. Then you can click done. And now when you remove the memory stick and scroll down to the bottom, oh, you should, yep, there's stick zap. Now that you've verified that StickZap is installed in the Clie, you can go ahead and put the memory stick back in. And this time we're going to format it again to get it ready for Mine 3. So just to go over that again, you click Home, go to Card Info, drop down menu, Format Card, oh, I clicked Rename, you want to click Format. And once again, we don't need to rename it on here, you have to enter text using this thing, and it's not a whole lot of fun. It's a lot easier to just rename it from the computer. Oh, this is also a good time to mention, if the battery life in your Clie isn't super long, it would be a good idea to leave it plugged in at this point. Alright, once it's done formatting, you can go ahead and click Home again, eject the stick, and then now we're going to put it back in the computer. Except this time we're going to take the Mine 3 files that are within this folder. You only want to take the OpenR folder, that's all we want to copy to the stick. And you just drag it right onto the stick and give it time to copy. And you can ignore the Palm folder, that's something that the Clie puts on there automatically and it doesn't do any harm to the IBO, they run just fine without it. So to explain what exactly we're doing here, um, the main difference between one of these blue general purpose sticks and an official IBO stick well, there's two differences. The first is the Mine 3 software, which we're copying right now. The second is a security file that's located in a hidden section of the stick, and Ibo needs that security file there in order to boot the software. If you don't have that there, he'll just play an error tune and shut back down. Now where StickZap comes into play is it can both read and write to the hidden area of the stick. So what it can do is you can either take a security file and write it to the stick, or you can pull one off of the stick and put it into an accessible area so you can then copy it to your computer and use it to make more sticks.
Once mine 3 is done copying to the memory stick, you can go ahead and close the window that you have open. And then we'll go back down here to safely eject hardware. Eject the stick. And pull it out of the reader. Now at this point, we can go ahead and put the stick back into the CLIA. <clears throat> and this is where we're actually going to use StickZap. And we'll click Home. Go down to StickZap. Click OK click OK again. You may have a different number of windows that pop up depending on the model of CLIA you're using, but essentially just click through them until you get to this screen. Now one thing that's unique about Mind software is that Mind 1, 2, and 3 all share the same security file, and that file is built into the CLIA itself. You don't need to transfer the security file from a computer onto the stick and then write it to the stick. Using the CLIA, you can just write it directly from the CLIA. So the way we do that is by clicking the drop-down menu, and then we're going to click Zap Ibo Mind. And we're going to click Yes to confirm that we want to change the stick to an Ibo Mind stick. Click OK. Then what I do, just to verify real quick, go back to Home, pop the stick out, pop the stick in again. <coughs> go back down to Stick Zap. And then you can see that the stick hardware key, IboMind 1, 2, and 3, matches the software that's on the stick. So we should, at this point, have a perfectly good and working Mind 3 stick. So the last step is definitely the most fun one, and that is testing out the stick. I've got Luke here. I'm going to go ahead and pull his normal stick out, which you can see is one of mine. And then we'll put the stick in that we just made. And hopefully, everything just goes perfect. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. So since this is a new copy of Mind 3, he's going to go through a few menus to start off. Um, depending on a few things, your dog may or may not import his name and runtime from your old Mind 2 stick. I believe names and runtime are stored on both the IBO and the stick, but I'm not entirely sure on that, and I've had mixed results. Sometimes they don't import anything, sometimes they do. So that may vary. But at this point, you're pretty much done. You can pick between voice or uh, tonal sounds, and then you're good to go. Set for basic sounds.